Dear YHS Virtual Delegates, welcome back. We hope you all are all refreshed back home and are ready for our final speaker of the day. Despite the issues concerning the coronavirus and the ones that it has caused, there's always a silver lining. Our last speaker was not available to join us at the original physical summit. However, now that we have gone virtual, we have the privilege of welcoming Mr. Hans Meyer, Managing Director and Co-Founder of Zoku Hotels, joining us from the Netherlands. Mr. Mayer will finish off this summit by sharing his thoughts on the future of hotel concepts. As we never know where this industry is heading, we can be sure that learning from someone with expertise like Mr. Mayer's will help better tackle the future. Mr. Mr. Mayer, welcome to the Hello. summit. How are you, sir? Thank you so much. Yeah, it's exciting times for our industry, but uh, still also very excited to be here with all of you. So happy to share uh, a lot of learnings and a lot of, about Zoku and maybe something about the future that we expect to, to happen. So um, what, uh, what I would like to do is first to tell you a little bit about Zoku and also the way how we developed it. Um, I think that's pretty interesting. And then after that, of course, I'm available for a Q&A from all of you. Would that work? That's wonderful, sir. Thank you very much. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you. So uh, welcome everybody and uh, thank you for uh, joining this webinar. Uh, it's actually my first one, so I try to do everything in a very uh, easy way. Uh, first, would like to tell you a little bit about Zoku. Zoku is a Japanese word for family, tribe or clan. And uh, Zoku was a subcultural phenomena in Japan of the 1970s, where people with the same lifestyle uh, started to live uh, together. and um, quite a lot of hotels, they have a very wide target audience. Our uh, target audience is a little bit more specific, so that's why we thought this is a great title for uh, our, uh, our concept. Um, we started off in 2009, and what is interesting is that a lot of traditional hotel companies, they start off with, an, um, they start off with for example, hotel floor plans, and, uh, and these kind of uh, things, but we believe that it's very important to start with people. So we se selected a very specific target audience, people what we call the global nomads, and uh, those are people who need to live and work in cities uh, between a few days and a few months. Now, what was interesting is that we started to interview them. We didn't ask them what they want because we learned also that people not always know what they want, but they, they are very well aware about what they are frustrated about when they're living and working internationally. So I talked to 150 people from the target audience. I started off with Pascal, who worked in 35 different countries in five years for Microsoft. I talked to expert managers, HR managers, mobility managers, and was able to get a very clear picture of what people uh, uh, don't like when they were uh, are traveling. And the biggest thing that I learned is that if you need to live and work for a few days, weeks, or months in a city, in a city that you don't know, where you don't speak the language, then maybe uh, a lot of you will also recognize that you can start to feel disconnected. I mean, we're talking to, the, to a very uh, international target audience, and I think that traveling is not always nice. So we wanted to do something about this disconnectedness, and that's why we um, uh, created this, uh, this concept. Um, after talking to those 150 people from the target audience, I decided that I wanted to live as my target audience myself. It's interesting to step out of your own shoes and to really step into the shoes of the future target audience. So I rented an apartment in Buenos Aires, in Washington and Bali, and really learned how this lifestyle actually uh, is. And that was basically the start of, uh, of the company. Now, a few years down the line, uh, apparently, this idea to take guests as a starting point worked out. We were able to uh, win a lot of prizes in our industry, have been quoted by Forbes as one of the 25 coolest hotels in the world. So, um, of, of course, I can tell you a lot about Zoku, but it's always nicer that other people uh, do the talking. And that's why I want to uh, guide you a little bit on how we get to this point where we are uh, today. So here's the next video, which uh, basically explains a little bit more about our vision, how we actually see cities develop and what kind of uh, role companies like us actually can play in to create better city living for people. 
In today's world, a city's development is defined by the lifestyle of its inhabitants and its visitors. People are moving independently between cities, work from anywhere in the world, and are increasingly connected, seeing the internet as their lifeblood. And while online connectivity within this group is strong and enables them to move around more easily, it also causes a bigger demand in genuine, offline interactions between people. Over 70% of the world population will be living in cities by 2050, which means that every square meter within these cities becomes an opportunity to create more with less. By reimagining the way we work, live, and play, modern cities need to develop a smarter approach towards flexible, multifunctional places that also stimulate connectivity and inclusion. One of the challenges for a city is not only to grow, but also to make the growth inclusive, to make the growth of the economy work for each and every person. So how can we uh, play a role in bringing the community, not only here, but bringing growth that is happening to the community? I believe the role of the city should be to act as a facilitator in connecting the ecosystem. A municipality should play a role in saying, look, there should be one place where everything comes together and where it actually enables the economy, the businesses and, and attracting the right people. And not just a big marketing stunt. No, this, it needs to be something that is here to stay, that is sustainable and on the long term really makes an impact on the city, both from an economic side, but also from a talent side and the whole innovation ecosystem side. You could say that a great city is never finished, perfect or complete. Instead, it is a dynamic, constantly changing place that can be reshaped to satisfy the current demands. We need new innovative concepts that combine accommodation, leisure, and work into one, along with a strong social structure that can support these trends in this new way of life. The future of cities lies within interactions between its inhabitants and its newcomers, fostering new ideas and innovation. So, um what is important when you start on an entire new hotel brand, it's always important to see, okay, next to talking to a lot of people who actually are your future target audience, there are also some bigger mega trends that we have been uh, uh, recognizing when we started off with Zoku. So first of all, flexibility and mobility of talent, uh, where more and more people live and work internationally. Uh, a, a strong urbanization rate, which was also explained in the video, meaning that space is becoming scarcer and more expensive. Uh, globalization and improved connectivity, that's what actually we see happening today with the crisis as today, that so many people are so connected. Sustainability and social responsibility, which becomes a more important part for our daily business. And last but, last but not least, what I previously explained, completely built around its target audience. And next to that, I'm sure you've ever heard about Blue Ocean Strategy. Our key focus has always been how can we create more value at less cost? It's not difficult to create more value, but if you want to make it more economic and smarter, you, ha you have to outsmart uh, the rest. And hopefully I can explain a few things that we have taken into consideration. So what is the target audience of Zoku? Is basically everybody who needs to live and work in a city between five days and three months. And then actually you can uh, think about these kind of groups of people like the international entrepreneurs, self-employed professionals, which is a fast growing group as well, project managers, manager consultants and free movers. This is basically the key target audience from, uh, from Zoku. What was interesting after the interviews with the 150 people, uh, Mark, uh, who's the co-founder of Zoku, and myself, we decided that we wa wanted to continue to work together with the target audience to develop the entire concept. So Zoku is not an idea of a few people, but it's a concept where actually 290 people from the target audience work together to come to the point where we are today. Um, it depends a little bit on who we're talking to. Normally we say Zoku is a hybrid between a home and an office topped with hotel services and the social buzz of a thriving neighborhood. But if you want to uh, give it into more concrete hotel terms, you could also call it an extended stay hotel with integrated co-working and F&B facilities. And here the interesting aspect is coming uh, to life because normally hotels are typical spaces where you sleep. 
Of course, you can also have meetings. But actually what we did, uh, Tech Insider, which is a US-based platform called Zoku, the evolution on WeWork and, and Airbnb. And actually we integrate both functions in our place. Um, this is the first Zoku. Uh, it's, uh, it was open in Amsterdam in 2016. It's in the eastern part of the Canal District city center. And it used to be an existing office building. Because at that time when we opened up, we just passed the financial crisis as well when we got the building in 2013. And we thought, okay, it's far more sustainable to use an existing building to transform that into a new hotel. And what we did, we took the right part of the building as you can see, and we took the entire top floor. We basically made it an upside down hotel because on the ground floor there was retail and at the same time it's not a very attractive street while we thought on the top floor it's pretty interesting, uh, attractive. So we put all the uh, uh, social spaces, including a greenhouse on the top floor. On the left side, we uh, at that time we work only had some locations in the US, but we invited them to come over to, uh, to Europe so they have the uh, left side of, uh, of the building. Now here you see actually a picture from the top floor where we actually built a greenhouse on the roof which acts also as a kind of a corridor when you arrive in the hotel uh, and the, in the social spaces. So here you see another picture from the greenhouse where you arrive at the social spaces and the social spaces are different than maybe what you've been expecting in a hotel. So what is important in Zoku is that we want to create effortless connections between people. Why? Because we said, okay, we want to defy loneliness in hotels. And the only segment that gets that right are basically hostels. If you go to a hostel, you jump out of your bunk bed, you tell yourself, okay, okay I'm going to grab one coffee. And then two hours later, you're still on that big table with a lot of nice people that you recently met. Hotels were not equipped for that. And we thought at some point this could also be interesting for the hotel model. So what we did, we took out all the traditional barriers that you find in a normal hotel and opened it up that, that guests actually can go everywhere. So you don't find a big reception desk in Zoku, you don't find a closed up bar, you don't find a restaurant where you never see a chef. Everything has been opened up. And that creates a kind of a very informal setting where always can people can stand next to each other. And that's why this informal setting, people get connected to each other very easily. Um, I will show you in a minute how we dealt with our room product, the Zoku Loft, but also here we uh, integrated the living kitchen. Now it's quite common nowadays that uh, uh, a lot of hotel concepts, uh, they reduce their F&B offering or they simplify their F&B off offering. But at the same time, eating and drinking is the most social uh, activity in the world. So that's why we said, okay, we want to bring a full blast kitchen in and people can cook in their own uh, Zoku loft, but they can also share bread, cheese and wine on these uh, big tables. Here you see some co-working spaces, so you can co-work also in the bar area, but this is a more quiet uh, space. In any case, uh, people can choose their own little world within the social space of Zoku, where they can meet, where they can play, where they can interact, where they can enjoy live music in the weekends or a brunch during uh, the weekends as well. But most important within Zoku is the community and actually are the people. People who work with us, we call them sidekicks. And the definition of a sidekick is a personal assistant or a confidant. And actually, where in normal hotels, uh, a lot of uh, staff is basically working on the process. So for example, checking in, uh, checking somebody out. Here, actually, their uh, biggest role is to connect people and IDs with each other. So what we do to actually connect people uh, with each other is that, for example, once a week, we have a free dinner for our long-staying guests where they actually are connected to other guests as well. Every day at four o'clock we get fika, which is a kind of a Swedish ritual where people uh, are getting free cakes and coffees and they all come together uh, and share stories at the big table. We have a lot of social events. We have a lot of business-like events where people can get educated and inspired. So that means that Zoku is far more beyond a traditional hotel where you put heads, heads in beds. And that's why we see that our vision connecting people and IDs is actually brought alive within Zoku. Then with, regard, with regards to the room product, uh, extended stay hotels or apart hotels are not new. However, their business model is often that they offer a bigger room. 
So one and a half to two times the size of a normal uh, uh, hotel room. And um, the interesting part here was that uh, we wanted to we, we wanted to check how can we uh, optimize this because you don't see a lot of extended stay hotels into city center areas because they just need so much space that uh, compared to a normal hotel room which is smaller they don't uh, generate the same return but we were thinking okay are we able to create a kind of a spacious micro apartment where you can live comfortably where you can work efficiently in the same space as a normal hotel room. Now, if you look to normal hotel rooms, in 99.9% .9 of the hotel rooms globally, the bed is always the most dominant piece of furniture. And that's why you never invite somebody in your hotel room, because it's a little bit awkward that people sit on the, on the bed. And we thought, okay, what about if we make the kitchen table paramount? If we make the kitchen table a place where you can grab a cup of coffee, where you can read your newspaper, uh, have a meeting, for example, three to four people, and even a dinner in the evening. So from all those ideas, we worked on uh, the Zoku Loft, and the Zoku Loft, when we launched it in 2016, our brand launch campaign, we gave it the title, The End of the Hotel Room, as we know it, and here's a small video that explains that. Welcome to Zoku, the end of the hotel room. The beginning of the infinite room. The workroom. The playroom. The come over to my place and make me smile room. The lay your head and launch your dreams room. Actually, this isn't even a room. It's one block of a thriving neighborhood. A hive of Zoku lofts and social spaces designed for you to stay longer so you can go further. Meet, sleep, work, dream, love, live, Zoku. Uh, so the interesting part of this, uh, this room is actually that people use it, of course, to sleep, but they also really use it to live. They invite people in this space to have meetings with each other. And that's especially what you also see during this Corona crisis is that our business model is far more resilient. The occupancy levels in Amsterdam for a lot of hotels have been, uh, um, are below, uh, are, are in uh, single digit figures at the moment, which is, is of course terrible for our industry, but still we are uh, between 30 and 40%. And of course that's far lower than we uh, are ex uh, normally see because we're often uh, majority of the time above 90%, but in any case, you see a big difference with the traditional hotels and our concept relatively uh, keeping it, uh, it strong. Um, we are often uh, approached by developers because they see Zoco as a uh, very interesting add-on in an uh, existing or in a mixed-use development because we actually bring a lot of life in the area, bring a lot of placemaking uh, in the area, and uh, due to the creativity of the concept, the brand is very appealing. What we've learned here in Amsterdam is after Zoku opened its doors, we basically revived the entire uh, area and a lot of uh, new uh, uh, shops and restaurants came into the, came into the space. And uh, on the last point, and I'm, I'm prepared to share a little bit more uh, about that, it's with regards to sustainability. Now, there are only a few hotels globally who are certified B corporations. And B Corp means that as a company, you try to, to use your force for business for good. That means that we learned that we are very good at connecting uh, people and ideas, and I will uh, briefly explain uh, that in a minute or so. But there are a few things that we actually do within so We have a different vision with regards to space. So first of all, if you look to offices, we got millions of square meters of offices here in Amsterdam. And an office is there 8,700 hours per year. And it's only used a little bit more than 2,200 hours if you deduct all evenings, nights, weekends, holidays, etc. So we said, okay, what we want to achieve is that we are using space in a far more efficient way. And I explained to uh, you about the Zoku Loft, which is basically a spacious micro apartment in the same size of a normal hotel room, so 25 square meters or 250 square feet. 
But what we also do is we stack different business models in our lobby, for example, because the lobby is a space where our hotel guests uh, uh, are having breakfast or a coffee in the morning. But we also have a membership structure where people, local Amsterdam people who, have, who own their own companies, they uh, are co-working with us during the day. And at the end of the day, those co-workers mingle with our international guests, which also creates a lot of connections. But it means that we are using real estate in a far more interesting way. However, we as a company, uh, Mark and I had a kind of a debate a few years ago, is if in 10 years time, Zoku is bigger, to what kind of company would we like to look? Uh, would we become happy of 18% return on equity alone? And we said, no, not at all. So we said, okay, we really want to make this effort to, um, to really create a good company company. And that's why we're putting a lot of effort in how we can use what we are good at for a, a broader society, to, to create a broader societal impact. And to give you kind of an example of that is that last uh, uh, last year we had a big uh, a big event called Doors of Zoku. We used a lot of uh, billboards in the city of Amsterdam, and basically the entire idea behind it was that more and more people feel lonely in cities. And although we are digitally very well connected, their lives become more and more anonymous. And we said, okay, behind every door in this city, there's a kind of a story. And we actually wanted to put the uh, the subject of loneliness in cities on the agenda as more and more people feel lonely. It was a great event. We worked together with Vice, with, which is a very well-known platform and a branding agency here in Amsterdam. But these are the ways that actually we try to increase our impact as a company. And a lot of people approach me already over the last few years that we really help them to, uh, to set up their social lives. Uh, Amsterdam has been open for a few years now. We uh, are incredibly successful here in, uh, in Amsterdam. Great review scores, which you also can, uh, can see on, uh, uh, on the internet, whether you look at booking.com or TripAdvisor. We're always in the top 15 in TripAdvisor out of 420 hotels. Um, we currently have Amsterdam in operation, Vienna and Copenhagen, uh, one in Copenhagen and one in Paris on the construction. Um, and the other ones are in the pipeline, but not final yet, but it also looks pretty nice. So this is the property in Amsterdam. What I said, an existing building in the, the uh, canal the district and on the top floor, is, uh, there are the social spaces. And here you see kind of an impression of the hotels we are planning to build in or currently being under construction in Vienna, Copenhagen, in Paris and in, uh, in Brussels. Mm -hmm. Last but not least, last video where we actually will explain a little bit more about, uh, about uh, what people actually feel when they experience uh, Zoco. So, so you will also hear a few uh, people who actually stayed with us, what they think about a concept, and none of those uh, uh, things they say has been scripted. Amsterdam's an incredibly vibrant city. When I first got here, I stayed in a hotel, and honestly, it was a learning experience. We quickly looked for somewhere else to live and found Zoko and it was a completely different experience. This is an inclusive package where you interact with everyone else who's here and we're either working here for a short time, setting up a business here. The whole feeling is that you're part of something that's really fun and exciting. I was feeling really safe and comfortable and able to create and um, just you know, develop, let's say, yeah. It was uh, something totally different from everything that I've seen over 14 years of working and traveling. I can tell my granddad about it. I can tell my future kids about it. Um, it's really special. I think Zoku is like one of those things. I really hope that Zoku is perceived as a place where we can bring people and ideas together. That people from different nationalities, different experience, different cultures, really find a place here where they learn to know each other, where they can work together and really push the world forward. Zoku really stretches the definition of a hotel into something new. It's a place where people share knowledge, ideas, bread, cheese and wine on a long communal table. We really wanted to do the research good. We really wanted to create something that is close to their hearts. 
It made me feel like I was part of something special, you know, something more than just me being a guest at a hotel. And there's always new people to meet, and there's always the, the staff I would just hang out with because really they were like family to me after having stayed there for three months. I go upstairs and I'm greeted by friends every day. It's a wonderful feeling. And they know me, they know about my life, they care about what happens, they share their stories. Um, we've become intertwined. It's a great place to work, it's a great place to socialize and have fun. It helped me create connections that are important for me and I feel like they're just a big family. Now, hotels are basically places where you put hats in beds. That's about it. And we really want to develop a model which goes far beyond that. We really want to become better in making uh, people's lives easier and more fun and more fulfilling when they travel and work internationally. I think this entire concept should go global and will be a huge success globally. It's just about spreading the word. Thank you everybody, this was it, and I'm all ready for any questions that you might have. Perfect, thank you very much Mr. Meyer. thank you very much for this insightful presentation. Uh, questions have been pouring in, so, um, so we'll, we'll keep you busy for the next couple of minutes at least. Um, I believe for our first question, it's best to start off at the beginning of Zoku. Um, and the question is, what kind of people do you surround yourself at the beginning of the Zoku concept? Um, who, who, who inspired you to get into these ideas and, and really who did you surround yourself with at the beginning? So, um, uh, before Zoku, I started uh, Citizen M, that's uh, maybe an, uh, another concept that you might know. And uh, I was one of the founding partners. And the interesting part, what I did with both Citizen M and with Zoku, I tried not to bring too many hotel people in the team. Basically, uh, tried uh, to uh, to have uh, to have more people with a totally open vision into the team. I also currently see that the biggest innovations in our industry are happening from people with a different perspective than a traditional hotel perspective. So that's also what I did here. Same time as well, I felt that when I was working uh, uh, for bigger hotel chains before. There were always the majority of the decisions were uh, taken by men and also the majority of the design teams were a lot of men involved. So here we, uh, on purpose, I wanted to have more women in the team because I feel they have a different view on design uh, and that actually worked out pretty well as well. So those are basically people without a lot of hotel experience and at the same time also more women in teams. Definitely. Thank you very much. Um, our next question is also regarding the, the beginnings of Zoku, I guess, and comes from uh, Patricia Tsuk. And she's asking, what were the issues that you faced uh, with the innovative Zoku concept in the first years of operations? Which things would you have done differently and where, where, would, where did you see stumbles in the first couple of years? So this is a, a fantastic question, uh, but I can also give you, an, I think, a pretty clear answer. What we did here at Zoku is uh, what normally happens in a hotel uh, when you develop a new hotel, a new hotel concept, people are going to make a prototype room. And with a prototype room, they do a lot of testing. We built uh, six uh, prototypes, and every prototype has been tested between with between 100 and 150 people from the target audience. We work together with two housekeeping companies, and after every iteration, we made uh, uh, Im improvements. With regards to the social spaces, we work together also with a big tech companies here in Amsterdam, which have a lot of global nomads working for them. So for example, I work together with a global HR director from Booking.com, and every now and then they send over a team to our office to debate about the concept. So actually, before we opened up, we had all those iterations of concept. We worked together with many people from the target audience, and we even used new technologies like mobile EEG scanning, where people got brain scanners on and cameras, and we could actually measure emotions when they uh, tested our prototypes. We could measure excitement, we could measure an anxiety. So we did so much testing and so much validation before that if when we opened up, there actually are not a lot of changes that we have made and that we feel we need to make. Um, and that's also one of the biggest learnings uh, we had, 
it's a huge investment and normally in a hotel so and if you look to other tech companies or if you look to tech companies where they use a lot of lean startup principles these kind of mm -hmm. principles we use as well in order to avoid that we should change a lot of things after opening so a major investment stopped you from doing the typical i guess startup mistake of making mistakes and learning from them and carrying on they so just learned a yeah. lot beforehand and, and stepped in with that knowledge exactly and really involve your target audience throughout the entire development cycle Wonderful, thank you. And Mr. Mayor, you were speaking about technology, and uh, do you believe it will change the face of hospitality in the future? Well, definitely, I think if you look to uh, the processes where no human interaction is needed, uh, I definitely think that uh, technology becomes a very, very big solution. But at the same time, uh, I'm also a very, a very big believer is that's all about humanity and uh, a human connection within our industry. So if you ask me quite frankly, I don't believe in, an, uh, in a beer serving robot yet because they are far from human uh, connections. And I think what in any case what happens in Zoku, if you look to our service scores on booking.com, there are I think at 9.7 or 9.8 out of 10. So that's huge. And that basically uh, means that people actually, and you can also see that in the reviews, that they are very raving in general about a service that we uh, provide through our sidekicks. So therefore, I believe the human part stays essential, but at the same time, there's a lot of work which can be automated back up, back up the house, which is not guest focus. Thank you very much. Uh, with another question, we'll direct uh, to a more broader stance against the industry. Uh, the question is uh, regarding the hospitality industry in general, which always is said to lie a bit behind the curve uh, and not progressing as quickly. So it follows up with new trends a bit later on in time. And, and what are your thoughts on this and how much do you think the industry can change in the future and really make sure it grasps onto new trends as quickly as possible? <clears throat> Well, the thing, what, what I learned in any case, I, and I, I can only give you my, uh, my personal uh, view on that, is that basically hotels always start from their existing picture and then they can tweak. What I learned from, uh, from Citizen M and from, uh, uh, from uh, uh, Zoku is that always start with a white sheet of paper, try to build your ID hotel concept, and then after that, you can look to what, what I have today, but then you can work towards uh, your most ideal picture. If you always start with what you have at the moment, you already create a lot of limitations for a creative process. And I think that generally the hotel industry is pretty, uh, uh, um, uh, pretty slow, also because they always look to other hoteliers and what other hotel companies are doing. What I learned is, okay, if you can look to successful business models out of our industries, what can you learn from them? So for Citizen M, I learned a lot from uh, companies like EasyJet and uh, Ryanair because they had a very efficient back office. And I learned from for Citizen M a lot about uh, companies like H&M uh, and Zara where they made fashion affordable for a much wider target audience, while at that time, the boutique hotel experience was pretty expensive. For Zoku, I learned a lot from companies like Uber and uh, Airbnb, where they actually are very much focused on using unused capacity. And how would that translate to a hotel model, that you can do more things with a square meter of real estate? So what is interesting is actually look outside your own industry. Try, for example, we invested in, okay, how, what can we learn from Lean Startup? We are working with virtual reality within uh, Zoku, our, our design process. We experimented with IoT. We just did sm small uh, experiments where we had one loft with 16 different sensors to actually, we were able to measure everything what people were, uh, were doing. So there's a lot of experimentation within our company. And I feel from that aspect, the traditional hotels, they can really step up. Absolutely. Thank you. And one of our viewers would like to know how has co-working changed the definition of the hotel experience in terms of this trend of having a feeling of belonging, a sense of community is going to be the same towards the new generations, is going to be constant, is going to change? So uh, if you look to uh, co-working, for example, is and especially with younger generations, you see that people really like to collaborate. People like to work in more informal settings, and that really taps into the co-living, uh, the co-working trend that you actually find uh, at Zoku. 
the interesting part is if you look from a kind of an, uh, an uh, using unused capacity point of view, is that if you go into a lot of hotel lobbies during the day and they are located in fantastic areas in city centers, they're often almost empty. So it's a kind of way, how can I leverage uh, the space that I currently have? And then definitely co-working is a great idea. However, co-working doesn't happen by itself. Community also doesn't uh, happen by itself. So it's more than just putting a kind of a coffee machine in your lobby, free Wi-Fi and a printer. It's more about interaction with people and how you can actually connect those people. So I see this co-working trend as a great opportunity for hoteliers because they have the space they have all, already all the availabilities and they can use their space in a much better way. And the second advantage is that um, those international hotel guests who stay with us and sometimes uh, live with us for a few months, they meet those kind of local Amsterdam people and they're actually building their local social and business network, which is also very interesting for both target audiences. Great, thank you very much. Uh, now we have another question which comes from a more entrepreneurial side from our audience. And the question is, how long did it really take you from uh, to get off with the idea of connecting ideas and people to really saying, okay, I'm going to put this into a concept, invest in it and put my money on this and really take the time to invest and, and develop it? So um, I started the initial idea in 2009 and I participated in a kind of a business uh, uh, business plan contest to actually get some uh, pressure on uh, on myself. And uh, then I did all the interviews and then I made a kind of a basic concept and finalized the business plan. Then I met Mark, co-founder, we uh, joined together, we uh, worked on this company and we started to put more and more of our time in uh, in it. So in the beginning, we, uh, I worked two days, per, two, three days per week on the concept and I did some other uh, uh, jobs because at the same time in an early stage of a company, you still need some cash uh, to uh, to live. And then after three years um, of preparation and uh, validation by the target audience, we went in full force five days a week and we were able to open uh, up in 2016. Now, that's pretty long, that's absolutely true, but it was also the reason for that, that we wanted to have a great location, and there were not a lot of location at, uh, at locations at that time available. We had to change the zoning, we had to strip the entire building, there was a lot of asbestos, all these kind of challenges that you find as an entrepreneur. So definitely you see now that our growth is now accelerating, uh, and we want to uh, open up two to three Zokus per year in, uh, in Europe. Very Thank well. you very Thank much. You. And now, what is your orientation for the future in terms of uh, what will be your market offer? Is going to be more affordable? You're going to change? So uh, definitely, we, we I think affordability is an, uh, is a very important thing. If you would compare us to uh, other uh, to our competition or substitutes, we are more attractively priced uh, than uh, than they are. But at the same time, as an entrepreneur, you you try always to find uh, optimizations of, of your building and you prepare to pivot your product. So currently, what we've been doing is that, for example, here in Amsterdam, we needed a three meters net height in our building. We were pretty rigid in our uh, designs. And basically what we did recently, we developed a kind of a new, uh, we deconstructed our uh, room designs and uh, created different components, two different bathrooms, two different sleeping areas, two different kitchens, two different cupboards. And now we can create a lot of varieties of rooms, works a little bit like Lego and Tetris. And also the rooms are being made uh, cheaper. That's one. Second thing, we, we are working on the digitally transforming our company. That means all the back of the house, all everything which is not guest focused, we are working on uh, 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 making this far more digital, which also creates some cost savings. But at the same time, we also uh, want to keep our, uh, our product uh, uh, from the human point alive. Uh, from an innovation point of view, a lot of uh, uh, developers, investors, and also press see as a kind of a co-living uh, brand, which is very forward thinking. However, the majority of our people until now stayed uh, with us until, say, one to two months. But we developed an uh, entire new uh, segment called Ultra Long Stay, where, for example, in markets where you don't have that many compression nights, 
where there's space in the market, we also will bring in people for longer periods into uh, our space. And apart from that, we are developing a lot of different uh, smaller innovations around wellness that people actually feel well, that can relate to sleep, that can relate to eating and drinking in order to keep them fit at, uh, at all times. Great, thank you. And, and another question regarding your concept and the future of your concept is, will you be adapting this to the cities, the different cities that you're going to operate in? Uh, so if we take the example of 25 hours hotels, that really changed the ideas and the whole concept for every place that they enter. Uh, do you reckon that your markets have similar needs from the Zoku brand or will you need to change this around a bit more? Well, basically, it's, what you see is that the room products, I mean, there will not be a, a, a big changes. However, in the social areas, we always try to reinvent ourselves. It's maybe not linked to such an, a local story that 25 hours uh, always have, so it will be more recognizable. But what is important is that if you would compare uh, Zoku with a kind of a theater or a cinema, then the, actually the movies uh, in that uh, cinema, that's basically the content. And we work together with a lot of local content partners actually to create the vibe and the best atmosphere in that. So for example, there are a lot of offline, uh, online communities in uh, different cities, and we give them a kind of an offline location, and that's why we tap into the local vernacular. Fantastic, thank you. And uh, regarding the topic, going far beyond traditional hotel experiences and touching guests as a personal level, how do you ensure, like from a staff point of view, that being casual and delivering touching experience harmonizes together? So this is a very interesting question. I will share a story with you. Um, so once uh, we had a guest from a big tech company here in Amsterdam, um, she, uh, she came from Asia, however, lived uh, in Seattle, and she stayed with us with, uh, for three weeks. And the day before she left, she prepared a big uh, a Thai meal in her own loft, and then uh, prepared everything and brought the entire meal for six people, six people up into our social spaces. And we were a little bit surprised. And then she approached us and she said, guys, you've taken so good care of me over the last few weeks, I want to take care of you tonight. Now, these kind of things are happening within Zoku because actually I feel there's a kind of redefinition of luxury. We have people here, they got a huge allowance to, to spend 1,000 euros per night here in Amsterdam where they can stay in the top five-star hotels. Now, why are they going to Zoku? And the main reason for that is that because the connections are so genuine. So uh, imagine yourself coming at a kind of a friend's party where you don't know anybody. And as soon as you arrive at your friend's home, you are introduced by your friend to a lot of his friends. Well, this is a kind of, a kind of the vibe that people actually want. They, we learned that not a lot of people, they want big, uh, very big rooms. They want uh, very thick carpets or marble uh, bathrooms. They really uh, care about that they uh, have a very functional space that's great design, but at the same time that the human part stays crucial. And uh, our people are absolutely informal, but at the same time also very professional and uh, also one step ahead. Fantastic. Um, and following Steve Hood's keynote uh, from SCR earlier on, do you believe there might be a necessity to adapt or uh, transform traditional KPIs like RevPart to something more like revenue per square meter in the near future? Or do you believe sticking to the traditional ones is still the way forward? No, definitely, because we're already using revenue per square meter, but also GOP per square meter. Hmm. Because for us, it's, uh, the square meter story is far more relevant than per room. Absolutely. And, and to go to a more uh, maybe personal, more you know, in-depth question, uh, given that you have so much shared space, of course, in your hotels, what profit per square meter ratio do you currently work on? And is Zoku turning a profit today? And if, if, if not, then when do you expect a positive ROI? So uh, I, uh, I'm not pre uh, prepared to give you all the details, but what I can of say course, today is that <laughs> the day that we opened in 2016, from that day on, we were profitable. So I think it's important to say that if you look to, for example, and those are a little bit the advantages. So if you look to the traditional extended stay business model, it's a far more simple 
business model than a traditional hotel because often F&B is very limited. Uh, people check in, check out, uh, not daily, but some say weekly or monthly. So it's, an, it's, it's a more leaner business model. The big disadvantages of extended stay is always that they had bigger rooms. And in a city context where space is scarce and space is expensive, they didn't help the business model. Now we said, okay, we want to create a more efficient business model, leaner than a traditional hotel, which we succeeded with this extended stay business model. But instead of uh, the traditional extended stay apartment that needs a space of one and a half to two hotel rooms, we were able to create this spacious micro apartment in the same space of one normal room. So you can imagine that our profit levels are uh, higher than traditional hotels. Definitely. Well, congratulations and thank you very much for your answer still. <laughs> And to follow with, how can hospitality colleagues take the concept of Zoku uh, and integrate it into an uh, educational uh, program in order to teach like the future generations on having uh, like new concepts and adapting it to the hospitality industry? So, um, can you elaborate a little bit on your question? So, yeah, so how, how colleges can really transform and learn from Zoku, who's come up with such a new concept, and, and integrate this into future teachings, future educational programs that us students can adapt and really make, uh, make ourselves prepared to the constantly changing environment. Uh, what courses do you see springing out from your, your suddenly innovative idea, I guess, is the question yeah. from our audience member. Okay, a, a few things, I think, which are interesting to share. First of all, how do you look to the market? I very much believe I prefer to be big in a small market than, in a, than to be small in a big market. That means we make very strong choices with regards to a target audiences. And I don't believe in, in the model that a, a hotel should be for everybody because everybody doesn't exist anymore. So first uh, advice I would give is be very selective in your target audience and make sure that this targeted audience gets everything they need in the best possible way. Secondly, always start with the guest. It sounds very logical, but what I learned from the bigger hotel companies I work for, they always start with their brand standards, they always start with the traditional hotel room where the bed is on the right side uh, and the, the, the table with TV is on the left side. So really start uh, with, with people and really dive in what they want to, uh, uh, what they want to have. And then first, uh, develop the entire concept through an, uh, a very detailed guest experience uh, and, 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 and translate that into a real guest story. So what is go the, the guest going to uh, see, hear, smell, taste, feel when he or she arrives at the hotel and only then start to design the hotel. Always take the philosophy creating more value at less cost. Where can you uh, create something new to the industry, which isn't in the industry before? Where can you improve certain things compared to the industry? But also, where can you reduce compared to the industry and where can you eliminate? There are a lot of things in hotels that people actually don't find very valuable and just strip them out to make your uh, company very cost effective. Involve the target audience in the development uh, uh, of the concept. And uh, most important, uh, what uh, the best advice I could give is raising your standard. Um, I mean, we, we won a lot of prices. We have pretty high review scores. And of course, things every now and then go wrong. So we're learning every day. But the standards we have here in this company are we really want to make a fantastic product and experience for our guests. That's a different story that you want to create as much money uh, um, one of the first TripAdvisor uh, um, comments we got is that a woman wrote, this concept has been created out of love, not out of money. And I very much believe if you do that and you uh, ma don't make any mistakes and you have a great back of the house, the money will flow in uh, by itself. Absolutely. Thank you. And uh, as the room style is like a space saver, to make more activity space for other activities in the room so you can leave. Does that contribute to making the prices uh, attractive? Could you repeat? So like the room style. Yeah. Okay, the room style is a space saver, right? Yeah. And to make more activities in this type of room um, and also like not only activities, but also to live into it. 
Is this also yeah. a strategy to adapt like your price to make it more attractive? Well, uh, uh, basically, what the, the room product, what we currently have, so when we did the prototype testing, a lot of people who entered the space actually said it doesn't feel like an, a hotel room. It feels more like a kind of a home, which is, I think, in kind of an ideal picture. And uh, what is interesting, sometimes people who actually need a hotel room, but also a co-working space in a the city, they actually have the same, uh, uh, well, they have both concepts into one room. So that makes it very cost efficient for a lot of our, our clients because they can work, they can invite people into the space, have meetings, but at the same time they can cook, they can sleep, they can do everything in the same space. And that, and they don't have any commuting time, so that makes it very efficient for people. Thank you very much. Uh, and now to move on to the last question of the day, which concerns, I guess, all of us young hoteliers around here. Uh, what skills do you personally expect from the future generation of hospitality students? What can we really focus on to train ourselves to make sure that we're prepared for the future? Uh, so first of all, become far more agile and uh, be, become far more creative and really show courage. Um, what sometimes happens is that uh, people have fantastic ideas and then they enter into a more traditional hotel scene and those fantastic ideas basically are going to die. So you definitely need, uh, need courage. Second, uh, you need a lot of passion in our industry. You, if you really want to become outstanding, what I said previously, you have to raise your standards in order to make something fantastic for the people. I mean, every in every... Uh, part of your body and every uh, part of your mind, this 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 objective uh, uh, should be there, and have a very innovative uh, approach. Uh, look around, learn from other industries, and just uh, uh, just try. I mean, uh, one of the most important organizational values we have at Zoco is always beta. That means we give people a lot of space to experiment. And of course, things go wrong. But if you fail, fail fast. That's not a problem at all. So this kind of combination, which I previously uh, explained, I think uh, that are, are really important ingredients to be successful in the future, next to, of course, to be very digital savvy. Thank you very much. We'll definitely take this all to heart, and I'm sure all of you out there as well take this to heart and continue for the future. Thank you very much, okay. Mr. May. Your insight has been very valuable to us, and I'm sure all around the world has learned a lot from you and from the other speakers we had today. Thank you very much again. Thank you, Mr. Meyer. Take care. It was a very, very big pleasure, and, and thank you all for listening, and I wish you all the best. Thank you.